The Awakening. A la Schmoop. I love being a wife and mother. Mostly. But when you're wiping noses and planning dinners and getting bossed around by your husband, you kind of lose track of your inner self. That's why I really enjoyed my trip to Grand Isle. Lots of downtime with my friend Adele, Madame Rice, and that hunky Robert. I know, I'm married, but a girl can dream, can't she? Robert and I went for lots of long platonic walks on the beach, and long swims, too. Uh-oh. I was so wired that I defied my bossy husband by staying up past bedtime. I think he was worried this would send me down a path of vice and crime. It didn't, at least not the crime part. But I was changing into a new, improved version of myself. Now I was Take Charge Edna. A sassy gal who marched to the beat of her own drummer. In another dramatic development, I was really starting to crush on Robert. Unfortunately, I didn't realize this until he decided to leave for Mexico. Even worse, vacation was over and I had to go home. But once I got back, I wasn't really interested in being the perfect wife anymore. So I stopped trying and started painting. My husband was a bit upset about my new life direction. So I got a little house where I could be independent and artistic and maybe hook up every now and then. Mademoiselle Rice really wanted me to become the hero of my own life, as Dickens would put it. Hmm? Oh yes, yes, of course. And she showed me letters from Robert saying that he loved me. I was at a bit of a crossroads in my life, but take charge Edna knew exactly which way to go. While I was expanding my mental horizons, I had a fling with the local heartbreaker, all say Arabon. I didn't love him the way I loved Robert, but in my defense, he was really cute. Guilty. I was pretty sure I should hate myself for moving out and cheating on my husband, but I had a hard time seeing all this happiness as a bad thing. Stuff got weird when I heard that Robert was coming back from Mexico. Imagine my surprise when I ran into him at Mademoiselle Rice's house. That deadbeat had been in town for almost two days, and his fingers must have been broken because I didn't get a letter or a phone call. Also, he had a little pouch that he'd gotten from some hussy in Mexico. Not that I was jealous or anything. And if you think that situation was awkward, Alsay then showed up and Robert vamoosed. I sent Alsay away too. I just wasn't in the mood for love anymore. I'm so fickle. It was another few days before I ran into Robert again, and things went a little better this time. I took him back to my house for smooches, and we took the next relationship step. The L word. Naturally, this was when I heard that my friend Adele was in labor and I had to go be her birth coach. It was kind of well-timed, though, because Robert was getting all moony-eyed about marriage. But when I got back from Adele's, he was gone. He only left a note saying, goodbye, because I love you. Come on, Rob. Not every woman needs a ring on it. I was in a pretty dark, emotional place after that. I went back to our vacation spot at Grand Isle, but that was even more depressing. I thought maybe a nice skinny dip would cheer me up. It was kind of a bust though, because I ended up drowning. Do yourself a favor. If you ever have a midlife crisis, just buy a convertible. Sponsored by Convertible Red Porsches. Not really. Subscribe to check out more equally fantabulous videos. You should see the subscribe button just below this one. If you're having trouble locating it, we recommend you watch our video, How to Find the Subscribe Button.